Alice, tell us about what you'll be looking for. Certainly. Tonight, <coughs> Millie's project organized your speech. Her objectives are to select an appropriate outline which allows listeners to easily follow and understand her speech, to make her message clear with supporting material directly contributing to that message, to use appropriate transitions when moving from one idea to another, and to create a strong opening and conclusion. She will have five to seven minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Millie will be sharing her experience as a volunteer as the, on election day as a poll worker in San Diego County. She will also will give us somewhat of an the requirements and the personal rewards. She's hoping the audience will be inspired or consider becoming a poll worker at least once in their lifetime. Please welcome Millie Velez with volunteering as a poll worker on election day. Volunteering as a poll worker on election day, Millie Velez. Thank you, um, Toastmaster. Welcome guests and members of the club. As Ellen said, I want to share with you my experience, but first let me share with you a quote. A quote by Carrie Shatman. Carrie Shatman is the woman who was responsible for the 19th Amendment of the Constitution of the United States, given the right to vote to all women. This was in August 18, 1920. And it's followed. Service to a just cause rewards the workers with more real happiness and satisfaction than many other ventures in their life. I've been a volunteer as a co -work, uh, co worker since 1998. I started doing this because my grandfather from my mother's side been doing so for many years too and growing up I listened to his experience. When I started working with the county they sent us an email we need poll workers. San Diego County has around 3,000 poll work sites and they always are in need of volunteers. They need bilingual people or anybody who is interested to do so. And it's very simple requirements. Their requirements are to be a U.S. citizen, a registered California voters, and a person willing to dedicate that day to help the voting uh, constituents to uh, the voting rights. You will be required to work from 5.45 a.m. to 10 p.m. at night. It's a long day, but I guarantee, uh, guarantee you the rewards are amazing. I, I loved it. You will be all of you will receive, if you volunteer, a training, online training for 15 or so minutes, depending on your abilities on, on computers, and two-hour class. The trainings are excellent. I guarantee you, when you take that training, you will be able to do the job on the poll workers. How many of you have gone to vote and going to a, a polling place? And you see all the volunteer people. Good. There are four positions. Prison inspector, <laughs> assistant inspector, touch screen inspector, and clerk. And sometimes you see the four people, sometimes you see three, because there are breaks. I will share with you my most recent experience in this past election as a prison inspector. As a prison inspector, you're being responsible to the prison, including pick up the materials that include all those um, posters that you see around, all the carton pole settings that you see around, all those materials you're responsible to pick it up, including the ballots. You're also responsible to contact your team to ensure that they're going to be available to participate. You also need to contact the precinct place to coordinate the setup, the closing, and any inconvenience or things that you need to know. You need to go and see the site to see how to set it up correctly. Those are the basic things that you're going to do as a prison inspector. Why to volunteer? I find out that in this particular type of environment, you acquire a specific unique leadership skills, like table topics. You need to answer on the spot questions. The same thing in this type of environment. 
the uniqueness of it is that in a such a short period of time, you need to make on the spot decisions that may be seen like in politically correct or so. You don't have in any, at least myself, in any other work environment that I have participated, I have time to say, you know, let me think about it. I give you an answer. Mm -hmm. When it's a situation that is going to be if In this situation, you don't. You develop those skills. You develop how to be politically correct in a very diverse environment. Not also with the clients that are coming to do uh, their body, but also with your fellow team members. Because you will be working with students, <coughs> seniors, and people with different background. It's an awesome experience. In fact, uh, in this election, I have for the first time a lady who participated, I selected as assistant inspector because I didn't have any. And I asked her, are you willing to do so? She said yes. We went to training together. She gave me a little bite that she was a little iffy, in the sense like it's her first time. And I think because it was her first time, she was a little bit nervous about it. We went to the training. I encouraged her, no problem, go for it. At the end of the evening, she said, you know what? I will do it again. It was a very pleasant experience. I enjoy it. You will assign to more likely to close to your neighborhood. Therefore, you're going to learn who's your neighbor. But at the same token, you need to learn to be very confidential. Why? Because you're going to know which is their party they're voting for. And a lot of people, they're very protective of that. Therefore, you learn to develop those skills there. Communication. Definitely, you learn to, in a very tight environment at times, because time is very slow. You can read, you can talk to your fellow team members. But at times, you have to be very cautious how to answer. Let me give you an example. In my second elections, it was in Ocean Beach. It's a very active community, so <laughs> to speak. And at the time, there was some time of topics about would affect the homeless community at the most. I forget what it was. But I remember the homeless community throughout the county went to the poll. This gentleman home, and he was probably maybe either on the influence or sick or so, but we cannot reject him. He had the right to come to vote. And he needed, he came and asked, I need to know about this particular topic that I need to vote. The precinct inspector, who I love because he teaches me a lot at the time, he said, go ahead, Milagro, help him. I have to be cautious. He asked me a specific. I need to find out this specific factor. Gladly, because he did that, I was able to quietly in the corner show him this is. Show me, show me. I have to literally show him exactly what he needed to mark. He cast his vote. No problem. That would have been perceived as you are influencing that individual. I was. That's uh, another rewards that you may get is you may get a stipend of $150, 125 or 100 depending on which task you participate on. Also, you get the kudos from everybody who comes. Hey, thank you for dedicating this time. Thank you for yourself. And for me, the most important of all, you are part of a little bit of history. Our founding father in 1804 Give us the right to vote. You are witness and ensure the integrity of that process. And I'm happy to do that. That at least I did my little bit to ensure that process that's been created for many years is still in place and is still good about it. We make a living by what we get. But we make a life by what we give. Winston Churchill. Who's master? Timer, would you please give us 90 seconds? Everyone fill out your evaluation forms and please be remembered to sign them.